tool or the clone tool comes in. Click on the uh, clone tool. It looks like a stamp you would have on your desk. And uh, actually, we would probably go ahead and enlarge our selection a little bit. We'll use this 19 pixels to see what it gets us. You can actually control click somewhere. I believe it's control click. We'll find out. Yeah, control click will sample an area depending on where you clicked. And it will take that area and paste it wherever you put it. And as you can see, if we control click up here, we get that exact same thing right here. But you got to be careful where you click because, and also how far you drag. For example, control clicking here, I sample this area. Well, the eyebrow is right below that. So if I start clicking here and dragging, as you can see, you start seeing an eyebrow and an eyeball, and then you know the glasses, and that's because uh, it takes from the center area that it sampled, and where every time wherever you click is where it pastes from that center area. But So if you click and you keep moving the brush, then it keeps sampling in the direction you're moving. That's why you usually want to use this one click at a time as well. And you don't, it doesn't mean you have to keep resampling with control click, it just means you should only fill with one click at a time. Now as you can see here, there's circle patterns wherever we uh, click at. And actually, if you get a really good look at it, the circles are actually shaded darker on the top than they are on the bottom. That's because the eyebrow is starting to come out here and therefore the light you know, is starting to show where the eyebrow is coming out, which is the bottom part of our selection. Um, so what we might want to do is modify our selection, try to get somewhere where it's even, uh, an even shade. For example, right here. And then we could uh, go about clicking around Now again, you will notice that there is a circle pattern here if you look really, really hard and really close. Not many people is going to be looking hard and close. But zooming out, it will kind of look like a, f a funny spot. So what you're going to do is um, blur it with the blur tool to blend it in. And this blur tool is this little raindrop looking thing right here. And you can use... I could have swore I make more custom brushes than that. Anyway, with the blur tool, uh, I'm not going to adjust any of its options. I'm just going to go around blurring. And you're going to have to go over it quite a few times with the blur tool because the blur tool is not like Gaussian blur. It's not very, very strong, or it's not a set number of anything. It's it's kind of pretty smooth, really. But anyway. This is why I like Gaussian blurs. Sometimes it comes really handy. And we'll probably have to do some more blurring, but the texture looks very close. And it looks like once the image is zoomed out to regular size, the, it looks perfectly normal. You really cannot see anything. The only thing you've got left is to go one pixel at a time across this line and fix this solid line right here. But, and again, with a really sharp eye, you can still see that there's a difference between the top half and the bottom half. But, I mean, you have to be zoomed in and have a really, really sharp eye. Alright, I think that that was the only and there was one other image uh, that I was going to cover or repair as an example but I don't think it would be necessary let me open it real quick yeah it's pretty much the same exact thing you're gonna have a part where the image starts uh, on another line for example the line cuts across here but it actually starts up here higher and uh, always watch for that. It can never, it's, it's never clean across the image. It always starts on one, uh, one set of pixels, or one, uh, I don't know how images are put together, uh, but it starts one block higher than what you might see half the time. But it never, the line never goes clean across. And this other part over here, as you can see, this image was shifted right instead of being shifted left. So this time we would have to cut the extra off this side and then move it 
over here and paste it over here where it was cut off of but you've already seen how to do that so I mean if you forget you can just watch the video again but that covers uh, delete everything yeah that covers fixing corrupted images and uh, hopefully it'll help you figure that out and uh, give you a little tip on how to fix them easier uh, that concludes this video. Remember, linuxintro.com, great place to learn about Linux and open source software such as the GIMP. Alrighty then, that concludes this video.